Hi, I'm Abby. And I'm Haley. And welcome, welcome to, to KBI's Player Song Academy. Today, we'll be talking about how to take care of your saxophone. What we'll be learning about is parts of the saxophone, what not to do, how to put your saxophone together, all about the reeds, posture, how to clean your saxophone out after you're done playing, keeping your instrument safe, and all the fun accessories to go with your saxophone. Today, KBI staff member Haley will be teaching us about the saxophone. Currently, she's working on her music performance degree in saxophone from the University of Mary Washington. So next, we're going to be talking about the different types of saxophones. So as you can see on your screen here, um, we have the alto, which is the smaller one, then you have the tenor, and then the berry. Um, so I'm going to show you the different parts of a saxophone on an alto, but all of the saxophones have very similar parts, and so when I'm describing it to you, just know it's the same thing. So first we have the body. This is the body of the saxophone. And then the body leads to the bell, and the bell is where the sound comes out. And if you dent it or damage it in many ways, it's not going to come out very well, so you don't want to do that. Then we have these flappy things here called the keys. And um, they are what make different sounds as you press them down and you have different notes. Then on the keys under them, you'll see this little orange things called the pads and they are what seal the keys to make the different notes. Then we have the screw here and the screw is what tightens and loosens your neck. Now we'll talk about the neck. The neck is, um, is what you put your mouthpiece on, and this is the cork, and it helps hold your mouthpiece on. So, speaking of mouthpieces, I'll show you one. So this is the mouthpiece right here, and on the mouthpiece, you're going to want to have some reeds. And a reed on a mouthpiece is what makes your sound vibrate, and you, you blow into the um, mouthpiece, and you blow air, and then it vibrates. And then to hold the reed together, since you can't put it together, it's just not gonna work like that. So we need a ligature. And I know that's a weird, funny word, but you'll get used to it. So we have two different types of ligatures here. We have a metal one and a uh, leather one. And the leather one has one screw that you can see, and then the metal one has two. So now that we've talked about all the different parts of the saxophone, we will go on to talking about what not to do. Never, ever, ever get your saxophone wet. As you can see in this picture, if you get your saxophone wet, then the pads will get wet. And if the pads get wet, they'll get sticky or even break. Also, you do not want to use cork grease on the metal parts of your saxophone. If you do, then debris will get on there and it won't be easy to put your saxophone together. So if you're already having um, a little bit of trouble putting your saxophone together, get a rag that's been laying around the house and you can um, wipe the bottom part of the neck off and you can wipe the inside, um, top, the top part of the saxophone and you'll be able to get the neck into the top of the saxophone. Also, you don't want to use any household items on your cork especially Windex. If you use any household items on your cork, then it will be very hard for you to put the mouthpiece on. Next, you don't want to ever lay your saxophone on the keys. If you do that, then the, then the keys will bend. Also, you don't want to mess with the screws because if you mess with the screws, then the saxophone won't play. You should just go to your band director or come to your local music shop and we can fix your saxophone up for you. The last thing is, do not grab your keys when you're assembling your saxophone. If you grab the keys, then they will bend, especially these rods right here. If you end up grabbing the rods, then they'll bend and it won't be able to play. Also, the neck, if you end up bending the neck, um, then it will look something like this. So you don't want to grab your neck um, very hard. So next we're going to learn how to assemble your saxophone so that your neck doesn't end up looking like this. First thing you want to do when putting your saxophone together is get your neck strap. So we're going to put our neck strap on and then we're going to tighten this piece so that it um, is about halfway. Usually I put it halfway so that your mouthpiece, when you put your saxophone together, sits exactly at your mouth. And you might have to adjust this later. 
Next, we're going to want to put our neck strap and clip it to this little ring on your saxophone. It is the, it holds the neck strap. And now your saxophone's safe and you don't have to worry about um, it dropping. Next, we're going to talk about the neck. When you put the neck on, you want to make sure to grab it here so that when you are putting your saxophone together, you're not grabbing it here and bending this key. We're going to want to unscrew this screw and you're going to want to put it on gently and twist it like this. Next, you're going to want to tighten your screw and make sure that your saxophone uh, neck is lined up just, just like this with your saxophone. So this little key right here is called an octave key and you want to make sure it's lined up with the neck so that when you play, it plays correctly. Now, you're going to want to put your cork grease on your neck and when you do that, you just put a little bit of cork grease on. You want to do this every few days, maybe even every day, um, and so that it so that your mouthpiece goes on smoothly. Now we have your mouthpiece and you want to gently twist back and forth to get your mouthpiece on. Now, when you put your when you put your mouthpiece on, you want to make sure it's facing towards you and it's almost lined up with that line and your octave key so that when you go to play, it's perfectly in shape. Now that we learned how to assemble our saxophone and put it together correctly, we're going to talk about reeds and how to put your reed on. Welcome to the reed room. What is a reed? Well, a reed looks like this and it's made out of cane that comes from a plant. If you're interested in seeing how a reed is made, check the link in the video description below. A reed vibrates to create its sound. So reeds come in various sizes and when you first begin on saxophone, you usually begin on about a size two or a two and a half, depending on your band director. When picking out reeds, there's different types of reeds um, and this, for example, is Van Doren. When you pick out your reeds, you want to make sure you choose the right size. So if your band director says, choose size two, you want to make sure, and you play alto saxophone, you want to make sure you pick out a size two for alto saxophone. Not a size two for a berry saxophone or a clarinet or a tenor because they look about the same. <laughs> if you look at these, they look the same. They have a little picture, but sometimes they can look very, very similar. So just make sure that it says the right size on there. So when you take a new reed out of a box, we will first talk about the reed case. This is just something that it comes in to keep the reed in. You don't want to keep your reed in this because then it can get warped. And I'll show you a reed that's warped in a few minutes. So what you want to do is throw that away. So now that you have your brand new reed, and reeds can be pretty good um, typically when they come out of the box. You don't usually have any chips or any um, flaws in your reed. Reeds, as you can see, are very, very thin. So they're very fragile. You want to be very, very careful, and they can chip if you're not careful with them. So um, I'm going to show you some examples of chips and what can happen. So, for example, this reed is chipped. It's a very small chip, but it can affect how you play your saxophone. This is a kid who did not take very good care of his instrument. And if you have a reed like this, you want to throw your reed away. If you have a reed like this, you also want to throw your reed away. Now, sometimes you'll get chips like this, and you won't even realize that you have a chip. Um, because the reed looks good, but then you realize that there is actually a chip in the middle and it broke in the middle of the reed. So as you can see, it's not playable anymore. So you want to throw that one away too. Now this reed, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it very well, but it's warped. Somebody kept their reed out of their reed guard and you want to make sure you keep it in your reed guard. This is what a reed guard looks like. If you don't keep your reed in a reed guard, it can typically look like this, this warped reed, and it doesn't play as well. So 
This is a reed guard and you want to make sure that every time after you're done playing, you want to stick your reeds in here. Now, how many reeds are you going to typically have? Well, it depends on the size of your reed guard. So this reed guard has two sides, um, so I can keep two reeds in here. And you want to switch out your reeds typically every other day that you play so that your reeds last longer. Well, how long can a reed last? Well, it really depends on how good you take care of your reeds. If you keep them in your case in that plastic piece that I said to throw away, you're not going to have a, a very good reed and it's not going to last you very long. Plus, reeds are expensive. So remember, your parents are paying for these reeds and you want to keep good care of them so that they trust you with your, with your reeds. Now, um, another good reason um, to keep them in a reed guard is because they can chip easily. If you have them just laying in your case, they'll chip and then they'll be, uh, they won't work anymore. And that, that goes into how long a reed can last. So if you keep good care of your reeds and keep them in a reed guard, they'll last you about two to four weeks. Now, we're gonna talk about how to put the reed on the mouthpiece. So I'm gonna take one of my reeds out of my reed guard. And this is our mouthpiece. So first we're gonna put, um, our metal ligature on and then we'll do our um, leather ligature. So whenever you put your reed on your mouthpiece, you want to hold your reed at the bottom with your hands um, and then you slide the ligature over. But you wanna make sure that your ligature screws are loosened so that when you put it on, it's not you're not having a hard time. So you're gonna put your ligature um, you're just going to slide it over your reed, but make sure not to hit the tip because if you hit the tip, you can chip it and you don't want to do that. Um, so you'll slide your ligature down and you'll see this little curve. Now you see how mine isn't completely over the, the bottom of the circle. It's like a little circle here. You want to make sure your ligature goes all the way down. And sometimes you're going to have to loosen your ligature a little more just so that it goes down like that. Now, what about the placement of the reed? Well, we're going to want to make sure that it's not too high or too low on your mouthpiece because then it won't play very well. You want to only just be able to see just a little sliver of the black piece um, of your mouthpiece. Now, now that we have it set correctly, we're going to want to screw your ligature, but don't screw it too tight. You want to screw it to just where you're like about to screw it too tight. So just don't don't do that though, because if you over tighten it, then it won't play as well. So this is what it's supposed to look like with a metal uh, ligature. Now I'll show you how to put a leather ligature on. So here's our other reed, and again, you're gonna to want to hold it at the bottom um, so that your reed is stable, and then you're gonna untighten and make sure it's nice and loose your ligature. Now, there's, you'll, you'll notice that it's not even, so the thin part of your ligature um, is supposed to be the top, and the thicker part is supposed to be the bottom. Um, and also, this one shows it as well, um, but you can't see it very good in the video, but you'll be able to tell when you actually have your ligature. So, let's put our reed on, and then you're going to want to make sure it's the right side of the ligature. And with the leather ligature, you're going to want the screw in the back. Um, so, and it's also on your right side, the screw is, so that's how you know it's, it's facing the right way. Now, you're going to want to put the reed on the same way so that it looks like this, and then you're going to want to tighten your ligature, and your reed is ready to play, um, but now we just need to put our mouthpiece cushion on. I'll show you how to do that. So there's a little peely piece right here, and we'll just undo that, and then you're just going to want to place it oops, right here so that your teeth hit this cushion and not the hard mouthpiece and it'll save you all the troubles of thinking your teeth hurt when you're playing and you don't want that. So you are now ready to play um, and now we're going to talk about posture. Hi, now that we're in the practice room, I'm going to show you exactly how to hold your instrument. So the alto, tenor, and very each have their individual ways of holding the instrument, so I'm just going to go over that with you right now. So first, we're going to talk about the alto. 
There's two different ways that you can hold your alto, and your band director will specify which one you should um, which one you should do. Um, but right now, I'll go over them with you, and you can decide um, while you're learning which one you want to try out. So the first way is you can have it on your side, and you make sure that your neck is in line with your saxophone, and your mouthpiece, you're going to turn it so that it's facing towards your music stand. Um, and so that you can read your music and it's not cockeyed. You don't not want your head to be all cockeyed because then you won't be able to read your music. So that is the first way. And then the second way, you're gonna wanna put your instrument in between your legs and make sure everything is in line. Now, do you remember me showing you that your neck is supposed to be in line with your instrument? <laughs> that you wanna also make sure your mouthpiece is also in line. So, you have everything in line, and now you're ready to play. Now, we're going to show you how to hold your tenor saxophone. So, the tenor saxophone is very similar to the first way that you hold your alto. It's just a little bigger. So, with your neck strap, I didn't really mention it with the alto, but you just want to make it comfy for you to be able to have your mouth in your mouthpiece. So with the tenor, my neck strap when I was playing the alto is a little bit higher, but you'll notice that when I clip it to my tenor, my mouthpiece isn't hitting my mouth, it's hitting my nose. So you wanna make sure you pull down your neck strap so that it's perfectly in line with your mouthpiece. Now, my mouthpiece is actually kinda of cockeyed, so as I did with the alto, I wanna make sure it's in line with my music stand in, in front of me. And now you're ready to play your tenor. So, for the berry, it is a little different because you do want to use your harness, and this is a uh, regular neck strap, so I'll show you how to put the harness on, and then we'll try our berry. So, then the harness kind of looks like this, and you want to, we're going to unclip it really quick, and so I'm just going to want to put it around my head, and put it around your waist here, and you clip it in on each side and get it comfortable for you. And then you can move the neck strap just like you can your alto and tenor up and down. Um, and you'll you'll fix that once you are playing your berry, of course. So you wanna have it on your right side. I'm gonna go ahead and clip that in. And see, it's kinda low on me right now, so I'm gonna have to adjust that. And if you need to move it over, you can a little bit. All right. And now my mouthpiece is perfectly aligned, but it's facing sideways. So I want to take my mouthpiece and make sure that it is facing in front of me and I'm ready to play my berry. Now we are on to learning how to play our saxophone. Now that we're back from the lesson room and you've played a whole bunch, we're going to want to clean out your saxophone before you put it in your case. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your mouthpiece off. And when you take your mouthpiece off, you're going to want to unscrew your ligature, just like so, and you're going to take your ligature off and take your reed off, and we will first swab our mouthpiece out with this little yellow butterfly swab. And you're going to want to stick the small end into the small part of the mouthpiece, and then you're just going to pull it through like so. And it might be a little hard to pull through at first, especially when you have a new swab. Um, but now it is all clean and you can put it in your case. Next, you're going to want to swab out your neck with this swab as well. And you're going to unscrew um, these little screws so that your neck can come off smoothly. And we're going to put the small end through the small end once more. And it comes through like this. Then you just pull through and your neck is all clean. Now, to clean out your saxophone, you have a big, bigger swab and it's usually colorful. So, Mine is blue. Um, you're gonna want, this little piece is called the weight, and so you're gonna wanna put the small end weight into the small end of the saxophone. And then it might be a little hard to feed through at first, especially when you're first learning, because um, it's a very long little piece of string here. And we're gonna put it all the way through. And then you're gonna wanna tip your saxophone over. Sometimes it won't come out at first. Sometimes it's a little hard, let's see. And it popped out for me. So then I just pull it through like this. And now your saxophone is clean. So for monthly care, um, this was daily care, but for monthly care, you just wanna make sure that you clean out your mouthpiece. And in this video over here, you will see a video of you cleaning out your mouthpiece with this little Christmas tree brush. And you just wanna use some Dawn soap and make sure that um, your mouthpiece is all clean.
Next, we will learn about instrument safety. Now that we've learned how to clean our instrument, you're going to want to put it in its case. So just like this picture shows here, we're going to just want to put it in our case like that and then just make sure to latch your case so that nothing falls out and breaks. Also, what happens when you need to go to the bathroom in class or somebody calls your name and you need to get up and set your saxophone down? You want to make sure to put your saxophone down with the keys facing up. You also want to make sure that your neck is facing up because if you don't and somebody walks by when you have your instrument sitting on a chair or on the ground, the reed could chip and you don't want that to happen because reeds are expensive. Talking about reeds, let's talk about what you're going to do with your reed when you put it in uh, its case. So we have a reed guard right here. You want to put your reed guard uh, in your case and stick your reed in your reed guard. If you don't stick your reed in your reed guard, it can get chipped, and you don't want that to happen. Also, when you take your reed out of its case that it comes in, you want to throw it away, because that's no good. <laughs> if you keep your um, reed on the mouthpiece, then it might get moldy, and it'll look like this. Ew, we don't want that to happen. That's gross, and you don't want to play with something like that on your instrument, do you? Well. Now that we've learned about instrument safety, let's learn about all the wonderful accessories we have to offer. Since we just talked about reed safety, the first accessory I can show you is reed guards. So we have reed guards that hold two reeds, which are awesome, but we also have reed guards that can hold up to six reeds so that you can have your choice of which reed you would like to put. And then next, we have a swab and this pad this swab is called a pad saver and um you can use it one of two ways one you can use it as a, you can use it as a swab and put it in your saxophone and then take it back out and make sure it stays outside of your case or after you clean your saxophone out with your swab you can stick this in your saxophone and leave it there and close your case then we also have these fun swabs we have lots of different colors. We have, I think, red, green, blue, black. Um, and then we also have this. And this is for a berry saxophone. And I guess it's shaped like a W for winter. I don't know. Um, but this, uh, this swab is for berry and you use it in the neck. Now we also have a thumb cushion rest. So you just stick it, it as a little sticky thing you can peel off. And you just stick it on your, um, the bottom thumb piece and it'll make it co more comfortable for your thumb and then we have a mouthpiece cushion the mouthpiece cushion will make it so your teeth don't hurt when you're playing your saxophone because it's a hard rubber um, and it'll um, keep your teeth from hurting and then we also have cork grease which is awesome and it's pretty cheap so make sure you always put lots of cork grease on your instrument so your mouthpiece is easy to put on and your cork stays nice and clean. Also we have a polishing cloth which you can use to get all the thumbprints or the weird grunge that's on your saxophone off and it'll make it nice and clean. And last but not least, we have a mouthpiece brush, and it's used to clean out your mouthpiece, of course, um, and it looks like a little Christmas tree. But if you wanted to get all of those things in one, your local music shop probably has a um, care kit like this, and it probably looks very similar, um, and it has all your wonderful accessories inside. Next, we're going to want to talk about the end plug and it goes in make sure it goes in the top of your saxophone um when you put it in your case so that your sa saxophone doesn't um move around in your case when you're walking around with it I'll keep it safe also we have some fun accessories just like this colorful neck strap we have green red blue black and we also have um a harness for the berry saxophone. If you're feeling like your back hurts or if you need a little extra support, you should definitely invest in a berry sax harness. It's very good for your um, back and it'll help you play a little bit better. And my favorite, we have this fun polka dot neck strap and it goes with your awesome case. 
So you can, if this is a little too much for you, we can get you a fun, colorful case that fits your awesome personality. We These come in colors such as teal, red, purple, blue, we even have black. Um, so thank you for watching this awesome video and we hope you learned so much and I'm so excited to hear you play your song. Thanks for watching today. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at kbimusicshop.com or call us at 540-891-7800. Our staff would love to help you out. Also, check out our website. It's www.kbimusicshop.com for a PDF of this video's information and for all your musical needs. Let us help you play your song.